Good afternoon from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well, sending loads of love to you as usual. Right, before I go into this video, just to let you know, Phil Curry's part two, three and four uh, will be coming up again very, very soon. We couldn't cram in all the other ingredients and other names because there's so much to go through uh, that me and him uh, will be able to bring to the table for you all. Uh, but it's all coming soon. It's just because I have to keep traveling around at the moment. Now that I'm back on form, uh, long may it last as well. Well done, Yamaha. You hit the nail on the head. It's prison behavior. I'm not in prison now. Uh, we know I don't commit crime no more, so there's no need to lie down and die. Get back up and only get up when it really matters most. When you think you need to raise it, you need to stay at the consistent level. Uncle Yami, get it, Yamaha. Well said yesterday, boy. Big up to my nephew, Danny Roach. Hope your health improves um, soon, my boy. Big love to you down there. I'll be down to see you next week, uh, as well as the rest of them down there in North London. Um, also, uh, what was it again? Uh, Lloyd Thomas and your lovely mum as well. Big love to you all there as well. Now, let's go straight into today's video. Now, John McFadden, right? Uh, an old friend of mine, right? Who had a fight with Tony Arjun. In previous videos in the past couple of years ago on other channels as well, there was a story about my big brother Tony Argent having a fight with him in Whitemoor down the laundry. It seems that it was Uncle Yami who was the straw that broke the camel's back. But hold on a minute, let me clarify this again in case people are not listening properly, right? Now, in this true crime world, right, and everyone's got a story. Right when there's other people get upset about certain things, but you don't get upset when you you're the one that's won all the battles. When it doesn't seem to go your way, everyone seems to you know. I understand that, and like today I'll take the time out to apologise to my old friend John McFadden, who's from is a homeboy from West London, who was close to Maguire's and Cabbage, etc. A man who looked after me. Rewind the clock. When you, that me and John was talking through the fence, Tony didn't hear the whole of the conversation, right? He jumped into it from that spur there and you started arguing. You both went downstairs, but hold on a minute, right? So that we get this thing straight. I told, shout it to Tony, leave it. It's not that kind of thing. They didn't listen. They went downstairs and they had it. Whatever happened, happened. Now, John McFadden knows this, right? And John, you know, I apologise. If any feelings and sensitivity and, you know, neglect on my part, my boy, Uncle Yami, you know, uh, asked for forgiveness on that. But we also have to say that John McFadden was my pal. A couple of you lot are saying, saying yeah, but Yami... No, me and John's close. You, the other one that's been commenting recently, you need to get your wires crossed. You weren't closer to John than, more, than what I was. John used to look after me. It wasn't in my benefit for Tony and John to fight, right? And John won many fights over the years. I watched him put eight officers on the floor and that kind of stuff. There's what people feared John. He wasn't no bully or nothing. He's a powerful man, very charismatic and funny man as well. Let me tell you something. We was all on the touchline one day, right? Big name from South London, Johnny Mac there, someone from the Midlands there, someone from East London there, big crowd there, uh, amongst other things. John, they got into a ding dong, South of the Region. Johnny Mac turned around and said to him, Yeah, I think you were a proper mug and all that. The other fella stumbled for a little bit and he went, You what? Did like da, 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 da. nothing happened, but it just shows you the nemesis. Duffy no to frighten in the Jamaican way of saying it. You know, whatever way we look at it during that life, there is always somebody is a nemesis or someone we fear at most. For some reason. It happens in big fights. Uh where he knocks out twenty geezers that he couldn't but yet you know you know what i mean you know it's the way the game is i used to be scared of some people and then he he's more worried about him but i used to say i'm not worried about him i'm not scared it just depends it's the that's human behavior i'm afraid mate so i was surprised with that with john answering him back because he would seem to be a bigger figure for all of everybody else do you see what I mean? But yet, when the Midlands one spoke to John, John was, right then. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. And the same with vice versa on the other ways. So it's all on the day and it's all on feelings. What I'm trying to say is on any given day, John McFadden could have probably beat up uh, many, many, many men and did, if you get what I mean, right? But that's not what I'm here to say today. You know what I mean? I'm here to, you know, put the record straight on a few things. There's even pictures of John having a wrestle. I don't know whether it's a joke or not, but he was wrestling with a polar bear, right? I know some people are gonna laugh, but he did. He did, right? 
And he's very funny, John. When we used to go on little missions and all that, he goes, yeah, you're on, you're laughing, you know. And all that. Me and John had a good relationship, man. Don't try and pour scorn on the thing just because one thing happened um, that didn't happen with anything else with me and him, right? And he looks after me. Remember that as well. And I took a piss sometimes and he always allowed me, but I used to do bits of craft with him as well, right? So let's get that right. That's one thing out of a thousand good things that didn't go the way between us like everything else did which a lot of things happen in that life and that kind of stuff john's with god now and i salute him tony Ardent says to big yourself up as well john and he's pleased with the work that you're doing outside in the community at the moment as well so uncle yami sends special love to you man forgiveness or not uncle yami ask for that with you because uncle yami says they really really loved you all right my boy the second thing now people say what they want they've got their own opinions that's up to them i'm not pouring scorn on that what i say about albert reading right to me right i'll ask some of you uh some 80 percent will say yes i know that already there'll be a few that say yeah but yeah I mean, he could be just going up and say, but listen does he really look like a man who's going to go in front of the tv up there and say he did this and that and that while people are still around let's have the story straight uh and if he didn't do what he said he did they could come back and say, da, 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 da. yeah, does he look like that kind of man? I go, Albert, I just can't see it. He's just not made, he's not, the way that someone talks and the way that he looks, it's not like he's suffering from dementia at that stage, does it? All right, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know him personally like that. But to me, bloody hell, I've got it right a lot of times over the years with characters. I just can't see it, right? So there's going to be a lot of you. Sometimes it doesn't work out when it's your family members involved and this one saying this about that one and that one. But you liked all the other good, supposed good things during that life where you won all the rest of your battles. It doesn't work out all the time. No one was infallible to that. I'm telling you, mate. Come on, let's put the cards on the table. The other thing was, you're coming up in the comments saying, Yami, oh, you don't know him. And all that. You're having a go at me, right? I told you not the other day, while I was going through half of that struggle there, something happened to me, right? As soon as my energy come back, there's people out here now that I tell you, if it comes down to it, I don't want to, it's old behaviour from me, and I apologise again. Uh, I went steaming down there, right? And I knocked on you, look, it was all, yeah, me leave it, da, 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 da. right, cool. And I turned up on my own. Don't think that I'm ever going to be bringing, asking, I don't bring people into my troubles out here. No, you're getting this thing twisted sometimes. Don't. I don't need it. I know when I've been, someone's done me or someone's trying it and overdoing it and all that. I ain't a criminal no more. But sometimes those old behaviours will come back and I will say, well, you know what I mean? I ain't having it. You know what I mean? I ain't that, I ain't that um, um, finished yet in that way, if you get what I mean. I've still got maturity and more growing to do out here, which I will be doing now. Yamaha, well said, spotted that, boy. I like the way you put that. Yeah, but you're not in prison. You're forgetting. You don't need to go down and have those down times because that's a, a rescue in there. And when you need to, you get back up and blah, blah, blah. But the behaviour and addictions, which was Colin McIntyre, was just trying to explain the other day while I was interrupting too much. But next time, I'll be letting fire off all the bombs, all right? I promise you. Um, about that. So, you know, my energy was a bit high that day, but it's starting to even out. Glenn Howard, I'll be listening. <laughs> I told you, see the contrast in the interviews. Each day goes by, it steadies back down. But you, you want to come up here and you want to put your name up there. You want to you try and be little me because a few things you don't like or you don't agree with or you think you know. I'll tell you one thing, right? The day the long fella. Paul Tiernan, they went up to visit Tony Argent. I was sitting to the right. You came in and you saw them out in the in the, in the thing, the long phone, and they said, when you walked in, you said, yeah, it's it, Tony, oh, he's with, and you go, yeah, sweet, and all that. Sweet, sweet, I don't care about all that. All it does is remind me when Charlie Richardson was, was saying about when the craze came into the um, the, the car thing, the car lot, where they, they tried to come in and do a bit of business and they were talking out the sides of their mouth. And he said to them, this is him to them, um, no, when they went, this is Charlie Richardson. Oh, you don't be watching too many James Cagney and Humphrey Bogart films, mate. Come on, mate. You know what I mean? Don't have a go at me. I'm not going to say anything because I don't do all that. I don't live that way no more. But when I see her, like that the other day, I'm, 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 I'll, I'll pull it to you and I will say it and I will be on my own. All right, mate? Sweet as a nut. Now, what else as well? 
Oh, no, we'll leave it at that today. Covered that, covered that, covered that. Maybe going live tonight uh, where there's a lot happening at the moment. Uh, I'm just pleased to be um, thinking and all that and everything. But thank you again. I love you all very dearly. See you soon.